I'm Taryn, this is Logan, and this is Max. Our life rarely goes as planned, and this story is no different. But we are determined to rebuild our beautiful steel boat, even stronger than she was before. And we're bringing you along with us. It is the second day of January, uh, 2023. And I'm here back at the boat doing some prep going to tape off and, and plastic off all of the stuff that we don't want covered in spray foam so that when we get a minute we can just go at it and spray the whole thing. I've got this really thin poly here and my roll of tape will get going on it. For weeks we had been planning out how we would go about spray foaming the boat. We decided to do it ourselves instead of hiring someone else in order to cut costs and also to ensure that we had a really thick coat of insulation everywhere. But doing this job wasn't as simple as buying a can of spray foam and spraying it. So getting to the point of actually doing the job took us longer than expected. I start in here by taping off everything that I don't want to be covered by spray foam and sheeting off the bigger areas with uh, poly, like over there. And I have two different widths of tape. You can see one's a little wider than the other and the wide one pretty much fits perfectly over the wood strips here and I don't want spray foam on those wood strips because I'll be screwing the plywood sheeting over top of that again but everything else I want spray foam on so so I'll get this all taped off and then I'll be able to spray the V-Birth. Uh, hopefully I can get the whole thing done. Each foam kit was supposed to cover 200 feet at 2 inches, but we weren't sure how much it would actually cover, or how much space we even had. We never had the 2 inches of foam to cover the the very front, like the chain locker part of the V-Birth before. There is only 1 inch, if that. It was pretty pretty bad job of spray foaming. So there was maybe one inch covering that and it was definitely always cold up there and that's where we had our the majority of our like mildew. Not so much condensation, but mildew. So hopefully by spraying this in the best I can do, it'll be better than it was when before we took it out. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's what it looks like. And then also, turn the light on here. We've got this area masked off and protected with poly <coughs> and the fridge hole. Because this here goes right through into the hanging locker. So that is our fridge hole and it would be really really nice to have the fridge put back in and out of our way because it's sitting in the middle of the sea can right now and it's making it very difficult to move in and out of there. I also have to build an insulated box for the spray foam containers. Um, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that as well, so that we can just keep dropping in new cylinders. Well, after a longer than expected hiatus, we are finally back to doing projects on the boat. Although not at the boat today, <laughs> Logan is actually down back getting pieces of wood ready for being glued back into the Vibra so that we can spray foam it and building a box for the spray foam chemicals to go in because they have to be at a certain temperature. So. That's actually happening down back at his dad's shop and we're gonna go check that out right now. While he's been working on that I've been trying to get videos edited <laughs> because I'm getting my wisdom teeth taken out tomorrow and I doubt that I'm gonna be able to actually voice over things for a few days so I gotta get a couple of videos done so that I can get them out to you guys on time and then you know recover from getting surgery in my mouth. <laughs> But luckily, Logan is good to go, so he's still working on projects. Are you coming, Max? Are you coming, Odin?
I am making an insulated box that will go around the spray foam box <clears throat> with enough room left in between the insulation and the box to put a heated blanket so we can keep the spray foam above 24 degrees Perfect. Celsius. So I have cut Styrofoam in half because it was too thick. Uh, so that should be good for that. <clears throat> and I've also milled up a bunch of crappy old cedar that we're going to use as backing. So that'll be the two inch depth. And we'll use that as backing wherever I've had to remove the backing. And cedar's not the best use for holding power for the screws going in but it's what we have and it's free. What you doing little Rick? Today I will be continuing the prep on the prepping for spray foam. So I've got backing, I've got a glue in. It is a beautiful west coast day. So the backing that I'm going to be cutting is basically the same as this stuff here, but I'm going to build it out two inches. So there will be a two inch uh, spray foam over here and the same with up here and all the way in through here. So I've got to replace all this. This is already one inch uh, ply and it's in good shape. and it's glued to the hole. I can't get it off. So I'm going to rip down another one inch strip and just screw it and glue it on top of that. So this is basically it for this section here. And then this should be ready to spray foam. And then I can move on to doing the backing in like the chains, chain plate supports and maybe in the aft cabin, I'm not sure. But that's about the only places we had to cut it out or get rid of it. So, yeah, I'll get going on that. The uh, V-Birth, that should be enough enough backing to reattach everything in there. So now I have to move on to the galley. Got to re-glue these pieces back up. Re-glue them back up inside here. There's a lip here that needs to be filled in, like flush. Um, just like on this side. Or that side and I am gonna change the design of this up a little bit um, it just had wood veneer glued right onto the steel and I think I'm gonna completely box it in and spray foam all of the metal because we ended up getting a lot of heat transfer especially in the summertime it was always really hot inside these cabinets so um, 
Yeah, I think I'm just gonna try and insulate them a bit better. Well, that's it for the prep work. Um, now it's just on to the cleanup. So, yeah, I'm getting really close to finally spray foaming. I just have to find a helper now because Taryn's got her wisdom teeth out and can't wear a face mask. Uh, yeah, so that's basically the only hold up. So Logan's at the boat and while he's at the boat, I'm doing things that are going to be useful once we're back on the boat. So today I'm turning these into these. A big part of us living on a boat is about us being able to live as close to zero waste as possible and in a way that is very good for the environment or better for the environment. So part of that is me wanting to switch everything that we have on the boat from polyester over to natural fibers. A while ago I went to the SOS, which is like a charity shop essentially, and I found two dresses that were made from linen. They were too big for me to wear, but they were perfect for cutting up to make napkins and dish rags. So that's what I'm doing. So this is my very first dish rag. And this whole pile of stuff I'm going to turn into dish rags and napkins for the boat. So if you don't know, linen is a fabric that is made from flax actually. It's like the big flax stalks that come off of the flax seed. You eat the flax seed but you can use the stalks to make linen. And it's a pretty ancient craft that comes from Europe. And it's just a very environmentally friendly fabric because it's literally just made from plants. It's also extremely durable, lasts for a long time, and can be washed easily and stands up well to being washed. It's just, it's a great fabric. It's also really expensive though, so when I found those dresses and knew that they were made from linen, I bought them right on the spot, even though I had no idea whether or not I was gonna be able to wear them as dresses or if I was gonna cut them up. And obviously I cut them up. So, I've got a lot of fabric here to make into, like I said, dish towels, or sorry, dish rags and napkins. And I'm excited to have some awesome fabrics on the boat that mean that I don't have to have as much polyester on the boat, which is great for our water supply. So let's get to it. I need a few supplies for doing this project. The first is a sewing machine. That's my sewing machine. I also have an ironing board and an iron. I have a cutting board. Um, I have pins, quality scissors, and obviously, thread <laughs> and this neat guy for cutting fabric. That's four napkins, four of them. I would like to get a different color um, and make more, so maybe I'll do that later with different linen. And then I've got two, four, six, seven dishcloths. They're all pretty small, but I think that should be good enough for now. So yeah. 
I've got a lot more material left over than I thought I was going to have, which is also nice. So if I do decide to make more, I know I've got the material for doing that. So yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. So another project that I want to get figured out before we get back in the water is making racks for drying spices and other things that I forage. So like, mostly kelp, honestly. You might remember from a couple of summers ago I had little rings of kelp drying on these things, which is actually just the mesh from our windows. But I want to make proper racks. So this week while I have absolutely nothing better to do, I'm going to start getting that stuff together. And the first part of that is finding the mesh. So Logan's dad says that there is some mesh in the shop here. And I'm going to go look for it. So that's the mesh that Charlie said that he had. So hopefully that'll work. It should work. Yeah, it's metal. So that's what we want. Um, and then I'll have to build a frame around it. So yeah, the whole purpose of these racks essentially that I want to make, it's not even, I don't even know if you call it a rack. It's like a flat, <laughs> a flat piece of mesh with a wooden frame around it so that I can just dry stuff on it because it was such a pain in the butt to dry all those kelp rings. Um, there wasn't enough airflow underneath them the way that I had it. It was just like a piece of mesh on top of a piece of wood. Yeah, it just didn't work. So the theory is that if I can make these racks, then I can actually have something to dry the kelp on and I can collect enough kelp to keep us going for the year because kelp is just super tasty and super healthy. In particular, I want to make a bunch of Japanese soups and you need to make a kombu and kelp is what you need for the kombu. So this is the beginning of that kind of idea, I guess. But oh, hi, Max. Oh, hi. He wants to go out back for a walk, so I'll take you guys out back for a walk too. Right? Yeah. You wanna go for a walkies? Can we go for a walk? Okay, let's go out back. You coming, Tice? Are you coming? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Where are you going? Those magic mushrooms? What about that one? Into the forest we go. Come on, Tice. Come in. So this super cute forest out here at the back of Logan's parents' property is also where they get most of their firewood for the year. So the firewood is what most of the house runs off of as far as heat goes at least half of it and all they're doing is cutting the blow down so all of those fir trees they fell this year in a storm there's a bunch over there too and Logan's dad has chopped them up and that's going to be the firewood for the next year next year it takes about a year for them to dry properly and then it heats the house so here there's like a fairly healthy forest and kind of under layer so taking a bit of wood from the forest doesn't really do much damage to the habitat um, but it does cut down on the energy consumption from hydro, so that's always awesome. So yeah, in case you're wondering, it's not actually intentional logging, it's just cutting up what had already fallen. So, just using the resources that are around us to the best of our ability, which is great. This is my favorite area. Not where they are, <laughs> but right here. Just look how lush and green and beautiful it is. It's hard to see because we're at a pretty high ISO because it's dark out, but it's pretty freaking majestic. It got really pretty out while we were gone. Look at that sky! It's all pink and purple and cotton candy-ish. That's cool, hey Max? Yeah, Max thinks so. So I'll show you the rest of the build of those units whenever I get to them. I might try to convince Logan's dad to help me. We'll see how it goes. 
But anyway, I'll get you the rest of that when it's done. See you guys next week. Thanks so much for watching, and an extra big thank you and shout out to our patrons for being here with us. We appreciate all of you.